and a happy Sunday fun day to you, Chad. I hope you had a, a good week, a good weekend as we roll on into our scheduled stream. Now, the apocalypse hasn't happened. There are no more detours, no more DDoSs, uh, no more shenanigans going on that's going to protect our little friend, David Shitrat, from being the highlight of his stream for once. His guardian angel took the fucking day off. No more, no more delays, David. No more delays. As Monday Matt would put it, today is the day that we are going to... Trigger the libs, own the libs. Oh, hot bants from the Gamergate 2.0 leader himself. It is going to be a fun time. We've got two things planned for today. We've got a, a bunch of shit rat coming up. We're going to be looking at a bunch of Little David's shenanigans. And we're also going to be doing the Donga Tribe art contest. And you're going to be voting on it. You're going to tell me which piece of art you think is the best one. And there are quite a few entries. So we'll take our time. We'll go through each meticulously. And I'll allow you to, to pick the winner. There, there are quite a few really good entries. <laughs> yes, uh, people like the little, the little opening. Uh, not just the Hampshire opening, of course. But I, I'll throw it up one more time. Because it is a fantastic song. I think it really suits David very well. I think it's his style. Let's let's just well, you know for the fun of it. One more time. I have a U T I S M. I have a U T I S M. Autism. Don't be scared of me. Don't be scared of me. Cause we're the same. You and me. I have a U T I S M. I have a U T I S M. Autism. Let's be friends. Play a game. I might seem different, but we're the same. He's gonna poke somebody's eye out with that little Highlander sword. That is a clear sign not to fuck with David. He got that at a prop store on Halloween. He is ready to roll in the streets of his hometown. He will take you on katana to katana. Or brave sword, broadsword. I don't even know what kind of sword that is. I doubt many sword collectors would because it's made of plastic and he just kind of flails it about well let's uh let's do a few super chats we'll do we'll do five minutes of it and then we'll get into we'll get into david there's been a lot of anticipation a lot of waiting to really cover mr shit rat so i don't want to delay it too much because i know i know that's what everybody's here for there's lots of good stuff to uh to take a look at so let's uh let's get this out of the way from sarah h uh hamsters everybody loves hamsters uh, we all want to live in uh, Hampshire, a hamster ethno state underwater. Let them have their uh, utopia. There's no reason the government needs to be on their ass. From HTR to you, shit rats, angel at work since last stream. Some guy, oh yeah, there's been a ton of shit going on. Uh, there was the guy that said fuck optics. I'm going in and shot up a synagogue. PayPal dropped Gab. Uh, apparently a helicopter crashed in a parking lot and somebody molested a lot of kids. Lots of stuff going on, lots of topics to talk about, but we're here for Shit Rat. We are here for Shit Rat and the Donga Art Contest. Umpty Madu, Jim, what if uh, the hamster consents? Well, I suppose it depends on the hamster, doesn't it? From Fash Bandicoot, opinions on AIU being anti-anon and his fight me in real life. I, I'm not anti-anon myself. I, I think anonymity is fantastic on the internet, and I think challenging people to fights in real life is retarded. From Sock Puppet 1, thoughts on Gab banning lollies? Again, this goes into kind of the previous thing with PayPal dropping them. Gab has had a lot of shit going on. And it would be it would be a hell of a talking uh, point, a, a topic, all of that fun shit. But we're here for shit rat today, and I don't want to lose sight of that. We could get lost in the thickets if we uh, start veering off onto other subjects. From Umpty Madu again, uh, who would win in a fight? Underwater objectivist hamsters in mech suits, or a rat swimming in shit. A shit rat, if you will. I think the hamsters would win it because they don't just have mech suits, he built them tanks. He built them fully functional underwater tanks to do battles in. This guy's not fucking around. From Big Al, I named my pet a smallmouth bass, uh, James Patrick O'Shaughnessy. Just figured I'd let you know. HH. From Fat Gay Riker, Papa Jim, tell us the story of skeptics, fedoras, and MRAs. Tell us of the individualist collective that grows a bigger hug box than Tumblr. Well, we're going to be talking about some of that today, actually. From Osha Osha, Meme Me Harder Daddy. 
Isaac Jones, Sargon's plan to save the West. Step one, send pipe bombs to own the libs in real life. Step two, shoot up synagogues. Step three, question. Step four, Trump tweets, hashtag Gamergate2. From Mr. Pinga's power, shit rat, shit rat, I don't buy that. If only they looked closer, would they see a femboy? No siree. From Amazing Exodus, or from Amazing Exit, sorry. Remember when Sargon sh er, shamed Andrew England for not only endorsing political violence? Pepperidge Farms remembers. From Stamurai Jamdown. Does liking traps make you gay? Yes, it does. Totally not me, says the D, and the cat ears only makes it better. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry to inform you, you like penis. Glitch Mob, Ching Chang, Ching Chang Chong, Jade's pussy <laughs> smells worse than my bong. Lovely. Again from Amazing Exod. Medicare likes to make videos har harming my posse. I can't sit by and watch my skeptics get exposed. Screw your optics. Gamergate 2.0. And that's quoted to uh, Sargoon. Mr. Suck My Balls 32. Oi, glad I haven't missed out on Papa Jim's stream. Uh, let's see, we'll do a few a few more of these. We'll do five more and then we're going to get into the subject. From Fat Gay Riker again. Donkey gives blowies and alleys for superberries. Oh, we're going to be seeing a lot of superberry art coming up. From Moon Vlad, did the happening in Pittsburgh make Jade so excited that she demanded yoga classes? Uh, always. Fat Gay Riker again. Donga, give good suck suck an alley for superberries. Finish anywhere you like. Donga, don't mind. Donga, no want to be homeless. <laughs> Mr. Suck My Balls 32, academics, please respond. We are going to need to put on our big boy suits because Papa Jim's about to stream. And finally, from Tree Master Bob. They should tape a big bag of coke and pills to the roof of Andy and Tonka's fight and turn it into a ladder match. <laughs> might, it might make it more interesting. But I, that would be a disadvantage. How is how is Donga going to climb out of his metal buffalo and haul his paraplegic ass up the ladder to get the coke and pills? I think that gives Andy a clear advantage. I don't think that's fair. I'm just going to say I, I don't think that's very fair of you. Chat. Oh, have we have we waited long enough to get to to get to David? Uh poor little David. Where do we begin with David Shitrat? Well, David Shitrat, to give you a basic uh, background, <laughs> is a cunt. There you go. You're caught up to date. Let's start with David's fundraiser. Now, David, you know, <laughs> actually, how do we even do this? There's so much crazy shit with this guy. Let me see. How do I want to do it? Do I want to go right into the fundraiser? Or should we talk a little bit? about his persona. You know what? We're going to talk about his persona. I think that's a good place to start. Because you'll understand how weird this fundraiser is when we read a little bit of news about David, our little Tinkle Boy Supreme. Let me find that news article about uh, David's shit rat, and uh, we'll read along. We'll read along. This is in walesonline.co.uk if you, for some reason, wanted to read along. I, I don't know why you would. Let me put this up on the window, and we'll We'll take a look at a piece of uh, news coverage that David got back in 2015. I think this is a good way to segue into who he is. Oh, let me let me just readjust that. I want that to be completely on the window so you can all see it. It's nice and good. There we go. There we go. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. There we are. David Sherratt, 18, is a men's rights activist who won't have casual sex in case he is falsely accused of rape. Cardiff University student David Sherratt is part of an online community known as MGTOW, men going their own way. Now I know, <laughs> look at this sexual beast of a man, doesn't want to doesn't wanna give up that virginity, might lead to accusations of rape. I know this man is a pussy slaying machine, he can't walk down the street without a vagina throwing itself at him, but he's come up with a strategy, he's not, he's not here to pleasure women. David is a serious boy with serious issues to tackle. He's not going to let some whore fuck his future up. So let's let's listen to the uh, to the lovely article. David Sherratt doesn't want a girlfriend. He doesn't ever want one. A 18 year old who has given up hope on womankind. It's not for me, the teenager said. I could be missing out on something, but I could also be putting myself in danger. Well, vaginas are known to kill men. Chemistry student David is part of an online community known as MGTOW, men going their own way. According to MGTOW.com, it's about ejecting silly preconceptions and cultural definitions of what a man is. It's about looking to no one else for social cues, refusing to bow, serve, or kneel for the opportunity to be treated like a disposable utility. 
and it's about living according to his own best wishes in a world which would rather he didn't. But what exactly does that mean to David? David, who is a virgin, is worried he could be accused of rape if he had casual sex. There is the risk of false accusation, especially given that I am a political target, given I'm a men's right activist, advocate, and people know who I am, he said. The big lie was that men are sexually free and women are not, he said. We do not know how many false accusations there are, he said. They could be the majority or they could be the minority. Now, why would David, why would David be so concerned with this? Being accused of rape. It's not like he, it's not like he goes around threatening women with rape and acting like a spaz. Good morning, Lauren. I've just raped you. Yes! I <laughs> oh, okay, wait, never mind. Never mind. Our little MGTOW. It all started off by posting on YouTube. David became known after he posted videos sounding his views on YouTube under the name Spinosaurus Ken. Some have had a few hundred views, other a few thousand. The reason you do not hear about men's rights advocates like me being accused is because I am careful. There's a lot of risk. You don't know how many accusations are true. He worries about so-called yes-means-yes laws coming to the UK. There were women fighting for a yes-means-yes law. That would mean a man would have to prove consent. How exactly do you prove that happened? It is anti-human rights because you have a right to a fair trial. If that's going to be taken away, human rights are going to be infringed upon. What else worries David? Questions of consent are not David's only fear. Oh boy. Men could end up in abusive partnerships. A lot of men don't know how to see the signs of abuse, he said. They are totally... Uh, they are told they cannot be abused. Services to men uh, help. Uh, services to help men abused by women were few. There are hardly any services whatsoever, and those they do manage to find are rudimentary and small charities with very little funding. Marriage is not on the cards. I do not believe in state-sanctioned legal contract of relationship. When it comes to marriage, the system is so stacked against men it doesn't make any sense. You're basically paying the, or playing the financial equivalent of Russian roulette with three bullets because 50% of marriages end in divorce. No man came out of that well. Ask any man who's divorced whether he ended up better off or whether he would have preferred to stay single. David, who is a student at Cardiff University, said. I hope that gives you kind of an overview of who our little MGTOW is. David doesn't want to risk doesn't want to risk freedom for pussy. He's not interested in that. Pussy is a trap and David will not fall into it. He's going to stay a virgin for life because vaginas are icky and girls are mean. So you might be surprised then with that kind of a staunch belief in going his own way and not really wanting to get uh, bogged down by state sanctioned financial relationships that he would find himself in a financial relationship with a woman. Strange. Now, the weird thing about this is a lot of the information isn't really out there anymore. You can find various screen caps and a few archives, but a lot of the stuff that was happening when he was doing his fundraiser, and it is his fundraiser, isn't really out there. But let's take a look at what we can find and piece it together what happened. So David, our big boy who hates icky girls, decides he's going to do a fundraiser for a poor, innocent, atheist ex-Muslim girl living in Qatar. And uh, we can see this, let me pull this up, on a, uh, a Reddit, he posted on a uh, Reddit, please help D. Misfit get out of Satan's asshole, it's a fundraiser. David Sherratt will be holding funds for D. until she gets a bank account. If you have any questions, you can contact Spinosaurus Ken or D. Misfit on Twitter. D. lives in the Arabian Gulf and is an ex-Muslim atheist. Being an atheist in her country is punishable by death. She is living with fundamentalist parents who would not hesitate to turn her over or perform an honor killing themselves. And that's if her atheism was discovered. She needs to get out safely, and my goal is to get her there as soon as possible. Please help us. Help D. What a good boy. I got what was it about D that that got David's attention? Was it the plight of this poor ex-Muslim atheist living in an oppressive caliphate-like regime of Qatar, her fighting off her fundamentalist parents, trying to avoid an honor killing? Or was it her beautiful smile? What's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen, David? Dee's smile. Oh my god, that's so... 
Oh, it's so beautiful, really. She's got such a pretty smile, guys. You don't understand. I'm not doing this for pussy. I hate women, remember. I'm doing this to save her from the icky bad people that want to hurt my beautiful angel. Now, David got some press about this. He actually got an article. He's been in the news a lot. First, the MGTOW thing, and now saving the girl with the beautiful smile at Qatar, who totally is real and not a fictitious thing. He got an article written on uh, Breitbart, of all places. Can you imagine? David Shitrat on Breitbart? But he was. So let's, uh, let's take a look and see how they cover this. Uh, there we go. Crowdfund aims to help ex-Muslim atheist girl facing threat of execution escape to the West. This is from Alan Bakari back in 2016. An ex-Muslim atheist girl from the Arab state, uh, Arab Gulf states, who faces execution, faces execution in her home country if her religious affiliation were to be discovered, is, with the help of the internet, planning an escape to the West. The girl, known on the web under the pseudonym D, currently resides in a Gulf state country where atheism is punishable by death. According to the fundraiser, her parents also are also fundamentalists who would not hesitate to turn her over or perform an honor killing themselves if her atheism was discovered. D also goes by the pseudonym Harem Girl on Twitter. Now, I, I tried to look that up. There aren't really any archives of her previous Twitter account. It's gone now. Where she posts regular critiques of Islam and Muslim culture, she describes herself as an atheist, a classical liberal, and an egalitarian. Breaking, or speaking to Breitbart Tech, Dee explained what it was like to live as an atheist girl in a hardlined Muslim country. Being a female in a Muslim fundamentalist family on its own means that I can never have freedom over my life choices. I exist for one purpose, which is obeying my guardian, whether it's my father or husband, and by that, obeying Allah. Being an atheist in the environment like that is simply not an option. There's no room for being a thought criminal or for ruining my family's honor. If that fact that I am an atheist was made public, my parents and members of my community would not hesitate to kill me. Financially dependent on her parents, there is little chance that Dee could escape on her own. That's where the internet comes in. An online fundraiser was set up last evening to raise the funds necessary for Dee's travel to Britain. In just a few hours, it met its initial goal of 3,000 British pounds. The fundraiser was set up, uh, was not set up, by a charity, an NGO, or a government, but by two close friends of D. One is Jen, another ex-Muslim who, like D, formerly lived in an Arab country. She now resides in the U.S. and is committed to helping D escape the same Islamic nightmare. Now that's going to be important for the future. Just remember that name, Jen, another ex-Muslim who escaped to America. All right. Explaining her motives for setting up the fundraiser, Jen said, I'm an ex-Muslim and I've gotten to know D very well. I used to live in an Islamic country myself before I became an atheist and moved back to the U.S. I've heard of her plight and I had to do something. I can't do that much more than ask everyone to help her. I did it because it's the right thing to do. Now, uh, here's where David comes in. The co-organizer is David Sherat, also known by his web pseudonym Spinosauruskin. Shitrat is a British student and an increasingly well-known men's rights activist. Given that MRAs is regularly portrayed in the mainstream media as a nest of women haters, it's positively baffling that Charat would go out of his way to help a young girl escape from a genuinely misogynistic hellhole. Perhaps this is just another theory that mainstream media is wrong. Readers will have to judge for themselves. Speaking to Breitbart Tech, Charat uh, explained the practicalities of the crowdfunded rescue mission. The plan is to get into the country, apply for refugee status with her, uh, was her option, when her original plan was getting a student visa was shot down by her mother's desire for her not to leave the country. Dee had difficulty working out how she would leave at this point, but after we started messaging and got together, we devised a plan to get her in. Our plan is to allow Dee to get into the UK on a tourist visa and apply for refugee status at the end of her stay, as UK law suggests. Since you are unable to work on such a visa and to apply for one in the first place, immigration officers need you to prove that you are capable of supporting yourself for your stay. This is why we need so much money. The £3,000 goal is a low estimate. The cost could be much more than this, uh, but this will uh, much more. Uh, but this will help with a significant amount. So, D. Okay. So, <laughs> let me just close this. So, our little MRA David decides that he wants to help out. He wants to help out D. And why does he want to help out D? Because she's got a pretty smile. So he's going to help raise money with Jen. 
and they're going to they're going to get her safe, right? They're going to set up that bank account. They're going to get her that money. They're going to do all of that. But while he's doing this fundraiser and after the fundraiser, people start to have questions, uh, namely, where is the girl and where the fuck is the money? By the end of it, he had raised somewhere between seven to ten thousand, uh, well, seven thousand pounds, ten thousand dollars, somewhere in that region. It raised a lot of fucking money, and people started to question this. In fact, one of the skeptics, our little Sargoon Capo V himself, uh, started to investigate what what exactly is going on, and you can see David was not a very big fan of that. Hey man, have you seen V's video about you? He hired a PI to research your personal life, man. It's part of the reason why I wanted to rebrand. It was really unnerving someone would try to hire a private investigator to get one over on me on the internet. Okay, so I blocked V. That creep was fucking obsessed and I wanted to sh uh, that shit off my timeline. I'm surprised you didn't block him after the whole ordeal with him threatening to dox D. I was worried it might provoke him to dox D. Ah, good point. He seems like he has no limits and is willing to do whatever is necessary to hurt people he doesn't like. And that fucking creature is still promoted by people like Sargon and Kraut. They can go die in a fucking fire. Uh-oh. That creature is promoted by Sargon and Kraut. What a weird, ironic twist where we sit today with Kraut and David side by side and V, uh, you know, associating with them. That's that's very bizarre. Yeah, he didn't like D, uh, D being mocked. He didn't like her being teased. He got very upset about it. I tried to be charitable, but uh, when I was mocked for trying to help save someone I care about escape the threat of death, I fucking gave up. They can choke to death on their red pills for all I care at this point. Now, as you can see from those messages, David's talking about V hiring a private investigator to look into all these all these hot facts. Well, let's let's look at the conclusion because V put up a concluding video to his uh, in-depth uh, <laughs> fucking investigation into David Shitrat. And where's the fucking money? And uh, you might notice some familiar names pop up with some more information that makes it sound even fucking goofier. Uh, let me let me pull this up. Uh, where's the conclusion video? I'll make sure it's all centered and we get the audio nice and all that shit. Just give me one second. You're going to hear a gypsy in a moment. I'll put him up on screen. The, <laughs> fucking, the, the gypsy detective V's on the case. Oh, boy. You shouldn't have fucked with him, David. He's running down leads. All right, let's see. Where where are we? There he is. Oh, he's very serious. The conclusion to Spino's fundraiser revealed. Well, let's see if we get any information out of this. As you guys know, uh, I have hired a investigator in order to get to the bottom of this situation. Uh, and I was about to hire the second one. If uh, one wasn't enough, I was quite determined. <laughs> He's going to hire two investigators to track down what the fuck is going on. That's how determined he is to get to the truth. Uh, to get to the bottom of this. And... Um, I got to the bottom of it, and I was quite surprised to what I found, and I think you guys are going to be surprised as well, and this is going to be one of the first videos where I actually read from a script, uh, because I don't want to miss anything, because this is some important stuff. So um, the investigator got me into contact with an ex-radical Muslim named Jen, who is running a underground railway in order to get Muslims uh, from... Um, hot spots uh, into <clears throat> safe places and um... now that name should ring a bell because we heard about it in the Breitbart article that's I, I believe the same Jen so the investigator tracked down his co-fundraiser to get the real answers and what is our what is our Jen doing right now she's running an underground railroad to save Muslims from Qatar and other Gulf states Totally believable. But let's find out what information Jen was able to give the private investigator and V about where that fucking money is. She did say that uh, it was ridiculous to say that uh, me saying Qatar is doxing her because, uh, in fact, she is now suggesting that using money is not the most efficient way to get these people out because money lives a paper trail. 
while uh, using um, houses and connections and contacts with people and favors uh, is a better way to do it. But anyway, the investigator looked into Jen and uh, turns out that she's legit. Uh, it turns out that she does indeed manage to get ex-Muslims out of uh, these places. Some of them do manage to get out. Others, unfortunately, um, end up in jail or uh, end up beaten, uh, honor killed uh, or worse, burned alive and stuff like that. Uh, it's a hard job, right? And I talked with Jen and hopefully I'm going to get her on a stream if she wants to come here. Um, we can talk about a few stories. Um, I would uh, really like to, to hear um, how it is to be an ex-Muslim coming from one of these countries. So she told me that she was the one who organized uh, the uh, charity for uh, Spino and Jen. So, uh, okay. So she's the one that organized the charity. That's the person the PI tracked down. Really great detective work, finding the person that co-funded the fucking charity. Really needed to pay the detective money to do that because it would have been impossible otherwise how are you ever going to find them and he talks to them and so they're the co-funder of the fundraiser for our magical atheist muslim girl d and they told v uh, you heard from the opening money isn't a good option it leaves a paper trail they also said that they run an underground railroad so if you run an underground railroad to rescue muslims from uh, caliphates from gulf states from uh, nations that have honor killings you know if you have that whole network set up to rescue them and save their lives and money is such a bad thing fundraisers just don't work why did you co-fund the fucking fundraiser why why did you set that up with david shitrat and just questions you know simple follow-up questions yes Pino and his girlfriend sorry and um they didn't manage to get ten thousand uh, dollars apparently they managed to get seven thousand and uh, Spino's girlfriend did go to the airport, as was uh, promised in the charity. And uh, here's where a human error has happened. Um, Jen, instead of uh, <clears throat> uh, waiting to see that uh, uh, Spino's girlfriend is safe in the United Kingdom, she already closed the charity at this point. So there aren't going to be any more refunds. Uh, she now has access to all the money. Um, and match me guys bernie can still win this we've just gotta no refunds fuck all of you we can get him in the white house match me right now <laughs> hey guys i run an underground railroad to rescue muslims from the uh from the middle east by the way money's useless i also opened up a fundraiser to raise money which i've closed now and there are no refunds but trust me i i'm saving people's lives over here and um, as I was saying, it was $7,000, not 10000 which uh, apparently was not enough to allow her to go to the United Kingdom. Uh, because it looked weird, uh, for, like, especially for a woman, to go alone on a plane. God, you know what else looks weird? Raising money through a fundraiser after you tell people explicitly that money is useless when you're trying to rescue people. Telling people you run an underground fucking railroad that's international. You run an underground railroad that spans Asia, the Middle East, and Europe, even to America. You're, you're covering multiple continents. That's how, that's how in-depth your network is. And she gets stopped at the airport, and that's where the story ends? Mr. Underground Railroad? Mr. I, Miss I, I Save People from Caliphates? Well, you know, fuck, what am I supposed to do? They told her, we're not going to sell you a ticket. Where's, where's your license for a ticket to the plane? I can't go against that. I don't have a rescuing Muslim girl's license. Sorry, there's nothing I could do. Thank you for the charity money. No refunds. Uh, with this amount of money, so uh, they denied uh, her visit visa. Now, uh, I did mention in a video, why didn't she go to an uh, embassy? And the reason is, is that if they refuse your political asylum, people do see you going into the embassy. And then, you know, when you come out, they can arrest you and uh, they will send you back to your parents, which is something that she's trying to avoid, obviously. Um, so apparently they do want $10,000 in the bank in order to, uh, <clears throat> to allow a visa into the United Kingdom. Yeah, you see guys, he just didn't raise enough fucking money. All right, the charity's worthless. I can't save you with my Underground Railroad because the ticket taker at the airport said no deal. But if you give me 3000 more dollars, if we had 10000 in total rather than this 
piddly little 7,000, she'd totally be safe. You guys fucked up. Not David Shitrat. Not Jen. Not the magical atheist ex-Muslim girl D. That's your fault. You fucked up. What are you doing, chat? Do you want her to get beheaded? Do you know what happens to atheists in Qatar? They throw them off rooftops. Right onto the corpses of gay people. Oh, she's, she's a dead woman. All because you were stingy. Way to go, Scrooge McDuck. Way to fuck that one up. And now they're going to try for another country. Uh, the problem is also that she had no sponsor. Uh, Spino, being a kid, uh, was advised to marry the woman, but I guess being a MGTOW kind of gets in the way. Wait a minute, I'm confused. Spino being a kid, he wasn't a kid. In that 2015 article we read about him being a MGTOW, he stated his age as 18 in the headline. The fundraiser took place in 2016. Spino would have been, David would have been 19 years old in 2016. He could have married her. He could have sponsored her. He wasn't a kid. He was an adult. He was a big boy doing university classes at Cardiff University. Of that. Um, and um, that's pretty much the whole story. So let's contemplate a little bit on what the fuck just happened. Spino, are you a moron? Better question, V. Are you a moron? You're buying this load of shit? Your private investigator put you in contact with the fucking person co-funding the fundraiser, who told you they run an international underground railroad, but couldn't save a girl because somebody at the airport told her no. They told you that David couldn't sponsor them because he's a kid, even though he's fucking 19 and in the university. Who told you money's useless, and then said, well, no, money's not useless. We're just $3,000 short. That was, the, that's what you spent your money on? That was your private investigator? What are you, what are you doing? None of this adds up. None of it adds up. I'm just, I'm just so confused. You know, uh, I guess the, the question that just lingers, lingers on my mind. And when it comes to David and Jen and Dee. Show me the money. Where's the money, Lebowski? Where's the money, Lebowski? Where's the money? Ah! Ah! Here's the fucking money, shithead! Show me the money! Yeah, that's right. Show me the money, David. Where's the fucking money, David? Where's the money, Jen? Where's the money, D? What's all this bullshit I'm hearing about couldn't get through the airport? The Underground Railroad couldn't help me. Oops, got put in the bank account. No refunds for anybody. If only you'd given more money to David Shitrat and the magical girl D. The girl D he wanted to save because she's got a pretty smile. Oh, such a pretty smile. And V hires a private investigator. He's going to hire two of them. Two, of our, two private investigators to track down that fucking money. And he just stops because the dumb bitch that co-funded the thing told them, Oh no, it's okay. It's okay, bro. Shit happens. Shit happens, I don't know what to tell you. No refunds, fuck you. No refunds, we're keeping the money. She's still in Qatar. Probably getting stoned to death by her parents. Because she wanted to date a MGTOW named David. Who's afraid he's going to be falsely accused of rape. Oh, oh god, poor David. Can't let those women take his cherry. Good morning, Lauren. I've just raped you. Yes! I <laughs> what a shit show. Uh, let's let's see what uh, V's brilliant conclusions are. I haven't actually watched beyond this point because I didn't think there was a reason to. Because this should be falling apart for everybody that's paying attention. But let's let's give it a listen. See what his conclusions are. Like no, seriously, are you a Cretan? Like, you do realize that you're playing with this woman's life, right? Like you you do realize that you're in the spotlight and you're going out of your way to piss off YouTubers that have tens of thousands of people as subscribers. And not only that, but you constantly yap your mouth to your friends. How the fuck do you know, how the fuck do you think that I knew she's from Qatar? And I have more of her docs, by the way. But lucky for you, I'm an actual, sorry, I'm not a decent human being. Oh, there we go. There's another skeptic with some docs. Oh, what a shock. And I didn't post her docs, just in case. You fucking imbecile. Instead of keeping your head down and making sure you don't drag attention, 
you go around on the Twitter, hanging around with people that are quite annoying, to say the least, that do drag attention. You're doing your best to piss off people that are YouTubers and the alt-right. So you're trying to make as many enemies as possible. Don't you think that it's a good thing that I looked into this shit? Because at least I don't have the basic human decency to go around and tell the people what I found. Imagine if I was someone else. Imagine if I was someone just motivated by making money. Hmm? I would have just hidden this. I would have kept it hidden. And I would have just constantly, you know, beat the drum. That all of this is fake. But V, you didn't expose anything. You, you got information that doesn't make any fucking sense. And then you didn't follow any of it up. You're being told bullshit by somebody that it, it literally told you they run an international underground railroad. That should be the first fucking flag that makes you think something is suspicious. That should be the first one. You should pop right up, be visible from miles away. V, that should be, oh my god, look, there's a flag. Somebody's doing semi-4 over on that fucking hill on yonder. Telling you that money's useless, it leaves a paper trail, but you didn't get enough money. David's refusal to talk about this anytime anybody asks him, where's the fucking money, David? Where did the fucking money go? Oh, and let's not forget D's brilliant post. Would you like to see how this poor... Okay, I want you to imagine you're an atheist ex-Muslim girl living under the oppressive regime of a Middle Eastern caliphate where you'll be executed if you tell anybody that you just don't believe in Allah, Right? Uh, where your parents will honor kill you. And how did D react to all of this? The, oh my God, I'm not going to get to go to Freedom Land. I can't get to the UK. I can't get to the US. I didn't have enough money. Or money. None of that. What was D's reaction? Well, I mean, she had a, a Ask FM. Let's read one of the posts. D here, for people throwing the accusations that I con people, I did apply for a visa. It did take a while, but I had to make sure that no one finds out what I'm up to, as all I could do was the paperwork. But either way, I didn't get it. So now I still have the money, and I'm looking into other places I can go. But there's nothing definite. I did write about all this in detail on my Ask FM when the decision came out. So thanks, Sherlock. But most of the people who donated are people who knew me and know my situation. Stop, stop trying to make up shit. And leave me out of whatever petty drama you want to have. The ex-Muslim atheist girl who fears that she's going to be killed by her fucking parents in a caliphate is referring to it as petty drama and calling people Sherlock when they ask where the fucking money is. Oh, she's got the money. Didn't get the visa, but she got the money. Okay, Sherlock? Fuck off with your petty drama. All right, I'm afraid for my life. The Underground Railroad run by Jen and David Shitrat couldn't get me out of the caliphate. Oh no, what am I going to do? My life is over. Whatever. Fuck you. Fuck you and your petty drama. Sanders 2020. Match me, motherfucker. We're, we're going to win the presidency. And then people would have started investigating and shit. Jesus, mate. Honestly, just... If you put your name on the charity, it's there. The internet is forever. And people will investigate if you piss them off. If you piss people off, they will look into your past. How do I know this? Because I'm doing this shit myself. Don't you think people looked into my past? Don't you think they didn't try to find shit about me? When you piss off people on the internet, this is what happens. And they will see that you have a charity and yet you don't have a girlfriend next to you, you moron. And they're going to investigate and they're going to find the exact same shit that I did. Imagine if someone is a, a person from the alt-right that you really pissed off. It's not that you got doxxed once before. Not, not to mention that these people... Oh, that's right. Poor David. Poor David got doxxed once, you guys. Can, can we hold a candlelight vigil for David getting doxxed? Oh, wait, he faked that. Did Spino pretend to get doxxed? Yeah, it was a dumb attempt to make a point. He released this video, deleting his Twitter. Oh, he was making a point, V. Spino didn't get doxxed. He was just making a point. There's another line of bullshit that you bought from Spinosaurus Ken. 
the the fucking MGTOW raising money for the ex-Muslim atheist girl to ride the Underground Railroad to America. Fake doxed himself. Just to prove a point. Just wanted to throw that up there in case anybody got a little confused. All right, let's go back to V's amazing analysis. Oh, the, the, you're yapping your mouth constantly. And I again, I have this information from other people, which are also not basic human beings level. And they keep their mouth shut. Jesus fucking Christ, you moron. No, honestly, it's just, see, like... Uh, I assume some level of intelligence that maybe you can't people, but no, you're just stupid. Now, let's talk about the girl. I'm not going to give your name, but I'm pretty sure you're watching this, right? If you don't care about your life, why do you expect other people will? Why do you go on about talking that you're an ex-Muslim on the internet and bragging about all these things and also pissing people off as well? Because she's not real. V. Because it's a con job, V. Because David Shitrat and Jen and D conned people out of money. Because there's no evidence where the money went. Because nothing in the story makes any fucking sense. I'm supposed to believe some 20-something-year-old that fled to America set up an underground railroad network to rescue other Muslims? I'm supposed to believe that she was only $3,000 short from getting a visa? I'm supposed to believe that she's bitching about petty drama when people are worried that she's going to die? I'm supposed to believe that David Vagina Zaricki Spinosauruskin decided to do this out of the goodness of his heart? No, 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 V. I have to go back to an earlier point, I'm sorry. But I need to know where that fucking money is. Show me the money! Where's the money, Lebowski? <laughs> Where's the money, Lebowski? Ah! Where's the money? Ah! Ah! Where's the fucking money, shithead? Oh, Show me the money! Ah, <sighs> he's so naive. It's almost adorable, really. How just, how just fucking naive he is. And how all these people keep popping up. There's crowd. Oh, did did David fake stocks himself? Oh, yep, yep, he did. But uh, we're almost done. We've got it. What is it? Yeah, not that much. We'll, we'll listen to the rest. Let's see what his closing thoughts are. Just keep your head down at, at least until this issue is resolved. I mean, the whole thing with me, all you had to do, all you had to do was the moment I mentioned Qatar, you could have contacted me in a DM and said, look, this is the problem that I have. Please don't mention Qatar, you know. Anything else, like, and if you would have had this conversation with me, none of this would have happened. But imagine my surprise when I wake up in the morning and five of my friends tell me that I doxed you. In fact, your boyfriend still says that I doxed you. I, I was this close to dox you, you know, all of it. But unfortunately, I have some morals, despite people claim I don't. Even I claim I don't, but I guess I found some. It is annoying when you're accused of doxing, you know, because I would never dox someone. I don't want to put people in danger. I'm not that person. I'm really trying not to do all of this shit. And when I'm accused, it, it infuriates me. So, well, if, if I'm accused, might as well fucking do it. But at least I used the common decency, as you call it. And I said, well, you know, what if? It turns out I did the good decision. But someone else might have not. You could have just, again, contacted me, acted like a normal person. Um, and again, just stop talking that you're an atheist. Stop talking that you do certain things that are haram. You know what those are. No, actually, nobody does. Because this bitch burned down every social media profile that she had the moment she left town with $7,000 he does. I mean, who's to say D was real? I have no proof that D was real. D could have been a name pulled out of an ass. And your private investigator, all they did was talk to the co-fundraiser. That's not really in-depth investigation. And of course, somebody, if they're part of the scam, they're going to tell you bullshit to make you shut up, V. Never never listen to the source when you're investigating them. You, you investigate around them. They're going to lie to you by default. That's how that works when you're running a money hustle.
Oh my god. Poor naive little V. Okay. So we've got a little background on David. We're back into David now. David, 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 the guy that loves the girl's smile. Oh, her smile was what made me con people out of $7,000. She's so beautiful. So beautiful. Now, there's some interesting things about David that we've got to cover, I think, are important. Because I want to try to paint a picture of, of who he is and where I think he's headed. So he's a MGTOW. He's a, you could call him an incel, I guess. Well, I, I guess he wouldn't be involuntary, or involuntarily celibate. So he's not an incel. He chose to be celibate. So he's just, a, I guess, an MRA. He's a MGTOW. But um, he helps out D, our a totally real girl that absolutely totally exists, and uh, she she disappears with the money, refusing refusing to answer the question where the fucking money is. But I think you're going to start to notice a trend with David, and see if you can follow along, okay? Um, our Muslim girl, right? She's raised in a Muslim environment, probably conservative, fairly conservative on her viewpoints, coming from a conservative background. You know, a very uh, structured environment. But I've noticed a trend with David that he seems to really like women like that. And it drives him crazy because none of them have any interest in how horny they make him. Like here he is with the chick that did the red pill movie. And I want you to look at his face. That's David on the right, just staring her the fuck down. He's actually biting his lip. He's so horny. He has to physically hurt himself to stop from leaping over that table and sniffing her hair. He just wants to get in there and give it a sniff -a I don't see what the problem is. My name's David the MGTOW. I raised money for D and got her out of the caliphate. You owe me a vagina. He's very excited. Oh, oh I want to just sniff her a little bit. But no, that's not going to happen. And we can't forget Lauren Southern either. I mean, David has a bit of a thing. Has a bit of a thing for uh, our little Lauren. I mean, you've heard the clip already. Good morning, Lauren. I've just raped you. Yes! I can go up. Even did a, a two-hour stream with Lauren. Two-hour stream with her. Where he just awkwardly fumbles and bumbles around. Trying to try to smash that ass. He wants to be one of those animus on her spats. He just wants to live on her thighs, but Lauren's not having any of it. Sorry, David. This is no-go zone. You may not enter here. <laughs> there's nothing there's nothing for you Lauren doesn't want doesn't want you creeping in her DMs which he tried to do hey I've heard rumors that you rejected David shit rat and that's why he's like this now is that true to which Lauren Southern responds lol I didn't even reply to his messages because I was working two jobs going to uni and making vids so he blocked me on everything and went social justice warrior so David has been denied pussy so much by so many conservative girls that he can't fucking take it anymore. He's going to go bat for the other team. Because while they... <laughs> well, I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but... He's not getting any conservative pussy. It's no-go for you, David. No Red Pill pussy, no Lauren Southern pussy, no D the Magical X Muslim Girl pussy. No pussy for you. No matter how much you like their smiles, David. They're not letting you in their spats. And that made him angry enough to become an SJW, where he started targeting his old friends, made a uh, fake Sargon of Akkad parody account, and went after him. Started shit-talking all the others in his little group of influence. All because women wouldn't have sex with him, even though he did a news article where he told people he doesn't like vaginas very much. Very, very strange, David. Very strange. Now, with David, he's going through a progression, and this is my theory on him. I think David desperately wants some hot Republican pussy. He wants that conservative cunt, but he can't get it. He can't get it, and it makes him mad. It makes him really fucking mad that he can't get that, that he can't get that Lauren Southern Southern hole. So he bats for the other team. But he very surely finds out that a majority of the women on the other team are actually dudes. They're all dudes, David. I know you went to bat for the libs, uh, but apparently they have more penises over there than the Republicans do. And so David was left with no choice. He has to go through the full transformation. 
He has to become the girl himself. I love how quickly Michelle found my tweet, and that's so mad online. She's calling me an egg. It's okay. You'll get over me being prettier than you one day. Oh, really, David? One day? I think that day's coming soon. I've seen how long you've grown your hair out. It's from Chloe Adams. Look, I'm not trying to imply anything, but your hair is following the exact pattern mine did when I was in egg mode. Egg mode? What? Egg is a trans community slang for people who refuse to accept that they're trans, as those who are still in the closet to themselves. David is becoming a woman. I, can we give him a round of applause? What a beautiful girl you are, David. You follow that dream. Even other trans, even the other trans activists on his side of the fucking uh, internet think that he's becoming trans. Everybody does. David got so angry he couldn't get conservative pussy that he decided to become a girl himself, probably so he could fuck himself. I think that's the end goal for David. He's going to sit naked in front of a mirror and fuck himself. Because if nobody will give him pussy willingly, he will become the pussy and do himself. <laughs> that's, that's, as I like to call it, David's just feeling trans-tastic right about now. Beautiful, long, luscious, flowing hair. Getting a sassy girl attitude on the internet. You can't, you can't stop David. Davina. We don't want to dead name her anymore. Davina's a beautiful woman. A beautiful woman. Doesn't need Lauren Southern anymore. Fuck your red pill movies. I don't care about D the magical ex-Muslim girl. I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to put on this pretty dress, slap on some lipstick, get naked in front of a mirror, and just fuck the shit out of myself. Welcome, welcome to the current year. We get her done differently here. Yes, that is. That's a very big brain move, chat. I'm, I'm reading chat right now. It froze up for a second. But yes, it is a big brain move. Everybody clap. Thank you for the claps. Davina is a beautiful woman. Uh, doesn't need a date. Will date themselves. Long, luscious hair. Even the trans activists on the liberal side of the internet think that David's a tranny. Everybody thinks that David's a tranny. Because I think David is. He just isn't being completely honest with himself. We need to be supportive. Okay? We need to offer a, a helping hand and create an inclusive environment in which Davina can feel comfortable with herself. She can wear pretty dresses. She can put on the lipstick and the makeup. We should, we should encourage Davina to be true to herself. To just to work it, girl. You know what I mean? You gotta vogue, Davina. You gotta get sassy with it. Sashay a little bit. Spice it up a bit. Everybody, please clap. Yep. Just keep clapping, chat. Give Divina her energy so she can come through. Now, one of the things you might have noticed about David, uh, especially during the V stream and some of the statements he made, was he was involved basically in a scam. Uh, he's seemingly insane. He repeatedly talked to Kraut. He faked his own docs, and he accused others of doxing. And, you know, it's it's weird because I've heard and seen these tactics play themselves out in the last year. Uh, you know, Davina recently accused Ralph of doxing people with his Discord, even though it was a, a complete bullshit joke. Uh, Davina has gone on tirades about the evil alt-right, uh, about the things the evil alt-right does. And it brings me back to this Wizard of Cause conversation. I, I keep going back to it in my head because things start to click more and more. This is uh, David arguing with uh, with uh, Wizard about where the origin of things started. And uh, Wizard tells him, you fucked yourself. And he said, how did I fuck myself? Well, shall we revisit when you were frantic about your lady friend, the place this all began, the help you begged me for, the way I told you directly not to bring up that reckless, or not to bring that reckless imbecile in, and how he fucked that all up. I had nothing to do with this crusade. And my shit died for it. So what is Wizard talking about? I think I think pieces of information are starting to fall in the line. David runs a money scam. And he gets called out on it. And he gets fucking angry about how he got called out on it. And the people that initially called him out on it were people on the alt-right and some of the skeptics. So David 
decides he wants revenge. And David gets together with some of the others, like Jeff Holliday and Wizard of Cause, and the imbecile. Who's the imbecile that he's talking about? Well, we have a sound clip. I can tell you who the imbecile is, but I'll let the imbecile do it himself. And the record. I, I don't know why you recruit this Spino. Honestly, the guy is dumb as a brick, and he doesn't. I didn't really recruit Spino. That's the funniest part. That Spino kind of approached me. I didn't recruit Spino. He's referring to David Kraut and V are in that conversation. Uh, that's one of the calls that leaked with Tonka. And he's telling V, V's asking, why did you bring David on board for your your uh, 24 hour opsing? And Kraut tells him, I didn't. David invited me on. This was all David's show. David was the one that set this up. It corroborates what Nick is saying. David Shitrat is so embarrassed that he lost $10,000 to a fake Muslim girl, that he started a fucking internet war with everybody that wronged him. And every dirty, dumb tactic that he's used for the last year and a half bitching about that has been in petty revenge because he doesn't know where that fucking money is. David, I want to know, where's that fucking money, Davina? Show me the money! Where's the money, Lebowski? Where's the money, Lebowski? Where's the money? Ah! Ah! Here's the fucking money, shithead! Show me the money! Show me that fucking money. Where did it go? It just didn't disappear, Davina. You started an internet war because you got duped or because you were part of a duping scheme. This is, this is amazing. The lore gets deeper every day. Every day the lore gets deeper. And there's little Davina in the middle of her beautiful transition. You know, let's go back because it really is. It's a trans-tastic kind of thing. And Davina's just really fucked up about it. And starts starts the shit show we've been watching for a year now. This is David Shitrat's doing. David Shitrat is behind all of it. All because he doesn't know where that fucking money is. And because he's sick of hearing where's the fucking money, David. <laughs> Are you kidding me? A mentally unbalanced MGTOW that's transitioning into a beautiful girl doesn't know where the fucking money is. And so he wants to burn the internet down in revenge. What? You couldn't write this. Eat your fucking heart out, soap operas. Anime, sit your ass down. Davina's here to write a script nobody saw coming. Even the best of Hollywood studios couldn't keep track of shit like this. It's, it's some next level stuff. But there's, there's, there's more. Because, you know, I wanted to gather up as much as I could. I want to paint the best picture of Davina. And when you're, when you're looking at this, all kind of playing itself out. You know, Davina's anger at not getting hardcore Republican pussy. Davina's anger at being made fun of because he doesn't know where the fucking money is. Davina's quest for revenge against the evil ought right. And those, those skeptics that apparently helped them. Namely, I guess, V. When, when you look at all of these autistic fucking actions, you're left with a question. Does our beautiful trans girl have actual autism? <laughs> well, let's take a look at some, some personality traits, and then we'll, we'll see if we can puzzle together whether David's actually autistic, or that's just a joke. This is from their old Ask FM. How do you maintain sanity with all the idiots who talk to you daily? I've been born with a sense of intellectual superiority that makes me feel like I'm always the smartest person in the room no matter what. Often having the ability to show it can help though. So I'm used to feeling like I'm surrounded by idiots. Oh, Davina, you're so smart. Oh, my little Davina is so smart. Oh, intellectual superiority, you sound like Garanchev. Oh, intellectual checkmate. Oh, what a big boy you are, David. Nobody says shit like that. <laughs> no, I mean, I guess they do when they're completely well-adjusted and normal, Davina. So could our little Captain David have autism? I, I don't know. Are there more clues that might point to potential autism with Davina? I, I, of what, what other evidence might we have? Well, how about a tweet for Mommy? Mommy put a tweet out, Davina, about how dirty your dirty, disgusting little room is, Tinkle Boy. This is what Spino's room looks like a lot, like Spino Mum. 
Oh, look at his beautiful room, guys. That's after Davina had a little tantrum. Somebody, maybe his mommy asked him where the money was. And so Davina just wrecked it. Don't you dare ask me where the money is. Don't you know how smirt I am? I'm intellectually superior to you, bitch. How dare you, how dare you ask me where that money is? I'm so, I'm so fucking smirt. Oh, Davina. Dirty room, overinflated, or overinflated sense of self-importance. Uh, smug, smug attitude, inability to read social cues. It's starting to add up here, isn't it? Starting to, starting to add up. I mean, it, it wouldn't be shocking, I suppose, if we came to find out that our little Davina was a member of the autism forums for the Asperger's and autism community. Oh, beautiful little Davina. What, what golden post might exist there that uh, our little friend Shitrat might have written? I don't know, chat. Should we read his autism posts? Would you like to go read David Shitrat, Davina, our beautiful $10,000 girl's autism post? I, I, I don't know. You're going to have to tell me. He is pretty smirt. I don't know if we can handle how smirt he is. Is it something you'd be interested in? <laughs> you tell me, chat. I'm seeing a lot of yeses. I'm seeing quite a bit of yeses coming up. Well, see, this is where the showman in me takes over. Okay. I'm going to make you wait a minute, because I need a little break. We've been going for about an hour and 20 minutes, hour, yeah, an hour and 20 minutes. I'm going to go have a soda. We can calm down my vocal cords a little bit. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to read Davina's beautiful autism forum posts, one after the other. And we're going to learn about how smart our little David is, and how hard his little life is, and how he has difficulties interacting with people, and how if you stare at somebody, it's a death sentence. Oh, there's some gold in this. I'm going to put on a little background music. I'm going to put up a little a little scroll that says, hey, you know, five-minute break. I'm going to go take a piss, grab some popcorn, get settled in, get ready, and we're going to dig through the TISM forums on our beautiful little baby girl. I think it's going to be fun. I think everybody's going to like it. Let me just put this up in case anybody wanders in. Oh, i got to move that up so it's actually readable. Uh, one moment. Almost there. And uh, we're back. I'm being informed by some people that uh, little Davina and her would-be boyfriend, Wazley, are upset on Twitter. If you could send your condolences to this beautiful couple dealing with brave issues, I think they'd appreciate that. It's hard living in a world where people just don't understand Davina's transition. So, <laughs> send, your, send your fucking... Uh, your words of encouragement to Wazley and Davina, our beautiful, our beautiful trans couple. Hopefully they can get through all this difficulty. So we've got a bunch of posts and people have taken the time to archive a majority of them and to uh, list them in chronological order. So I don't even know where we should start, to be honest with you. There's so many things. We've got relationships, social anxiety, uh, dating and love, autism spectrum, interests, off-topic obsessions, religion, friends, family, and social skills, and, oh, there's an even bigger one. Just general autism talk. But let's start, I think, at the beginning. Let's introduce ourselves. And I'll put these up on screen as I read them. Take them a second to load, though. Uh, he's known on the forums as Spinosaurus King. <laughs> okay. Just uh, one moment while I go through and I find. I had, his, I had some of this organized ahead of time. I was mostly working on the art contest, but we're going to go through a lot of it. So let's find our little Davina. All right, well, here's one in an introduction thread. Oh, let me put this up on screen. Where's my, where's my capture? i got to pull this stuff down here. Uh, pull that off. Pull that off. Go to window capture. Should be showing up. Let me try to get that a little bit better on screen. Is that showing up better? There we go. Lots of lots of posting. Good karma. Spinosaurus. Well-known member. Just remember that. Spinosaurus on the Autism Forum is a well-known member. Talking about amino acids in an introduction thread, I don't know. I mean, every single person has some arbitrary archetype of what normal is, of which they would be bloody lucky to find a single person who has, ever sing or has every single, single attribute that they could class as normal. And even then, that architect is nowhere near common, let alone a majority. 
and so considering someone not normal or weird is arbitrary, judgmental, and completely wrong. All that means is if someone says it's not, <laughs> if someone says it is, my spidey senses say that this specific aspect of you is not what I consider acceptable. So never bother with being normal because most of humanity, whatever you do, will be considered weird for something. Now, the important thing about this and why I, I wanted to start off with this one is remember David's room? You see what's in the background there when he's talking about his spidey senses tingling? Well, there's Spider-Man because David's so smart. He likes to talk about things that relate. So in case anybody thought, you know, maybe this isn't actually him. No, David would be autistic enough on the autism forum to talk about Spider-Man because apparently he loves him. He wants to be all up inside Peter Parker. Maybe he wants to be the new Mary Jane. Maybe that's what this is all about. Davina wants to take her place. Beautiful. Beautiful and brave. Oh, there's so many. There's so many to pick from. We're just going to go through them. We're going to go through them all, chat. I'm sure we're going to find some gold nuggets. It'll be an adventure. An adventure digging through the autism forums for Davina's posts. All right. I think that yeah, there are only three introductions, so we'll move past that. Let's... Well, you know what? Let's just jump into the deep end. Let's go into love, relationships, and dating. I love that they organize these. Makes it so much, so much easier to go through. It's in a thread called Your Relationship Status, and they're, discuss they're discussing love. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. Yeah, of course. Uh, this is Davina, right there at the very top. I'm in love with a lesbian girl. See her every day, planning to tell her that so. <laughs> Pla wow. In love with a lesbian girl. See her every day, planning to tell her that we can't see each other anymore. Sighs. Oh, heartbreaking. Is that why Dave? Is that why David wants to become Davina? Is it? Does David always seek the unattainable? Is that why he became a MGTOW? Not because he actually thinks women are horrible but because none of the women that he wants will touch him. Lauren Southern ain't gonna touch him. That red belt chick ain't gonna touch him. D doesn't even exist. And he's in love with a lesbian girl. Way to aim for the stars, champ. I'm sure you can I'm sure you can get her to love the D, David. Beautiful. Beautiful and brave. Really smart. No wonder you're having relationship problems. You're trying to fuck somebody that has zero interest in fucking men. <laughs> How dumb are you? Oh, there are more. There are more. So bear with me as we search for more of Davina's posts. Oh, well, let's find out what his preferences are. Apparently, he's talking about them. Oh, uh, <laughs> here we go. Meh, everyone has some kind of preference. I don't seem to have any criteria for the appearance of a girl, but I do have some personality traits that I need for it to work, and I will also try not to sound offensive, like how she would need to be responsibly intelligent for me to have a decent conversation with. I would say that you shouldn't get worried about it. Remember, David is intellectually superior to the majority of you plebs out there. All right, he's he's just very smart. He has to maintain his sanity. And when he finds a beautiful lesbian girl, he needs her to be smart too. Because if she's not smart, she can't keep up with his smartness. And that's just not going to make the relationship work. Brilliant. No physical requirements, but that bitch, that bitch better be able to read. Otherwise, it ain't happening. He's a picky boy. He's a picky boy. Let's uh, see if he talks about any more preferences for the ladies in the love section of the autism forums. Oh, we've got, we've, well, we've got some more here. Let's, let's jump in. From Spinosaurus Kid again. Yeah, I'm with these guys. Try to form some kind of relationship before anything. Then tell her when you feel the time is right. Try to get onto it in a conversation. One idea is maybe talk about a TV show or movie where the character has Asperger's and bring it up there. I'm sure there are plenty of other ways you could do it, though. <laughs> I, I could, can you picture David? <laughs> I almost feel like this is something that happened to him in high school. I want you to picture David going up to the lesbian girl. And I want you to picture the lesbian girl is like the most cliche, stereotypical, bull dyke kind of chick you can, where there's no way you could confuse it, right? Where she is just really super fucking open about, I have no interest in men, I am a super lesbian, get your penis away from me. 
And here comes David, awkwardly strutting across campus, up to this this lesbian girl. And he he he, you know, the first thing he says is, "What's your IQ?" And after she just stares at him, he finally tries to work it in because he wants her to know that he has Aspergers, that he's autistic. So he just casually works it in by using a TV show that might deal with something similar. Hey, have you ever seen Life Goes On? You know that retard Corky? Yeah, that's me. Would you like to go? Would you like to go on a date with me? I'm too autistic to understand that you only want to go muff diving. Would you please go on a date with me? <laughs> oh, David, what are you doing, champ? Maybe you shouldn't have become a MGTOW. Maybe the reason you're you should have asked a straight girl out on a date might have been a better approach to this, David. Oh, no, nope, that's the... Okay, all right. <laughs> Was there another one in here? <laughs> Please tell me there's not another... There is another one. Okay. That was from the love and relationship thread. Let's uh, continue on. Oh, where was the social interactions one? Uh, no, obsessions and interests. Oh, family and social skills. Here we go. I really wanted to play a sound clip for you. I, I honestly, you know, I looked for it. I could not find the timestamp. It's in the conversation he has with Lauren Southern. And when David's talking to her, his mother interrupts them and yells at him because he pissed on the floor. She actually interrupts his conversation and says something to the, you know, the effect of, why can't you wipe after yourself? All right, David has a tinkle problem. He's not a big boy, can't clean up after himself. You saw that tweet of his room, you get the picture. He's a messy boy. He lives in his brain because he's smirt. But, um, you know, <laughs> these are things that would make a conversation with a woman awkward. Telling her that you're like Corky from Life Goes On. Uh, trying to hit on her if she's a lesbian. Having your mother scream at you about peeing on the floor when you're hitting on Lauren Southern. Just things like that. So you can imagine he, he probably has some social interaction issues. Let's uh, see if he lays them out for us in that particular portion. <laughs> particular portion of the uh, the forums. My, bar or my parents both had issues with accepting. But it was mainly due to ignorance as to what it actually was. You're just ignorant. Okay, you're ignorant, Mom and Dad. You don't understand. You don't understand. I really wanted to fuck that lesbian. This is your fault. This is your fault she won't have sex with me, Mom. Wipe my tinkles up. Wipe my tinkles up and you put my Spider-Man poster back up on the wall. Why is it you can't understand these things? Well, we've got another one. Yeah, I guess that's the main issue. It's also probably why none of us are really sure what to do. Because we can't keep eye contact intuitively. And if you doubted, if you doubted he has trouble looking at people, I, I don't know. He can't do eye contact, but he can creepily stare at them when he's really horny. Look at that. She's not looking at me. I can avoid direct eye contact. Oh, I just want to smell her hair. I just want to live in her sweater. I just want to get in there and I want to live inside it. Ah, oh, and give it a sniffer -o. Oh, David. David, David, David. You, you are a weird little fucker, let me tell you. I hope there's a post about him playing with trains in here. <laughs> in the in the thread entitled Aspies and Hugging, uh, David has a post talking about his hug-related uh, lifestyle. Nobody wants to hug me other than my weird friend or my mom when she isn't in psycho mode. Oh, aw. Oh, little Davina. Davina just wants to hug you guys. After you wish Davina and Wazley happiness in their future relationship, just give him a hug. Give him a digital hug. Just go to his Twitter and just say, I'm with you, Davina. I understand what it's like. I know that you can't pick up on social cues because you are literally autistic and you tried to date a lesbian. <laughs> I understand that you have trouble tinkling in the toilet. I just want to give you a, I want to give you a hug. I want to hug you, Davina. I want to be your friend. It's not a mommy hug, it's a friend hug. All right, this is how bros do it, all right? It's how bros hug. It's how, it's how we're going to do it. I'm just working my way through the post, chat. We've got plenty to go through. Take our time and read the nuggets of wisdom that Davina has for us. Maybe with some positive encouragement, Davina, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe with some positive encouragement... Davina will tell us where that fucking money is. Oh, we've got a long post. This is a bit of a, a paragraph. 
what thread is this in? Has anyone gone through life cycles? All right, well, Davina has. And they're going to tell us about their uh, very personal life cycle. Even the stages of it. It's very detailed. Very impressed. My stages. Up to five, no noticeable differences. I'm sure I watched a huge amount of child's TV and tried to interact with people in that way. From five to eleven, I was the gifted child in my school. They hated that. I had a problem with authority even at that age and was only... <laughs> It was the only atheist in a strong Christian school, but my weirdness was written off as quirky, purely because I was clever. 11 to 13, severe, severe is all caps, by the way, severe psychological bullying from the kids in my grammar school. I was now on a level playing field of intelligence, and so my weirdness started to really show itself, and my lack of social skills meant I was unable to deal with the bullying, even to the extent that my friends started to join in. <laughs> I had several meltdowns that were written off as a reaction to the bullying, and I got in a few free punches in the process. I wonder if the teachers ever suspected. So he's telling us he was so fucking autistic, even his friends started talking shit about him. Brilliant. From 13 to 15, did not give a flying fuck about what anybody said or did. My skin had been thickened by the bullying. Not in a good way either. I was angry had little care for anyone and just tried to do what I came to school to do, learn. I made a friend through who I found uh, had AS, I guess autism spectrum or Asperger's, and informally diagnosed me a long time before I knew what it was. So David wasn't professionally diagnosed being autistic. He was informally diagnosed as being autistic by a friend. 15 to 16. Due to my communication issues, my G C S E exam was uh, a buildup was by no means painless. I was screamed at by my parents and even locked out of the house at times. I went into a stage of clinical depression of which my uncaring parents just wrote off as being a lazy teenager. I became irritable. I hated everything and thought about suicide way too much. High doses of painkillers were at arm's reach, but luckily I didn't know the lethal dosage, so I decided it probably wouldn't have worked. And at the time of writing this, I guess this is 16 now. Oh, 16 till now. If this is 2014, this is he'd be 17 at the time he wrote this. I've kind of grown up emotionally and intellectually. I have self-diagnosed in that time. And now seriously want to convince my mother to let me go further down the road. I can be really insensitive and irritable at times. And deadly tired. My attention span has always been bad, but I am finding it harder and harder to keep focus. School is getting difficult at times as well with the need for explanation so detrimental to most exams, and now, seven weeks away from IAS, I'm probably going to completely ruin my prospects of getting into any university. Uh, where are we? Keeping myself just above the metaphorical water of depression, lacking desire for fun at times, and general attention span and energy decreasing, medicating energy levels with sugar and caffeine, not as effective as I would like. So, <laughs> Davina, our beautiful trans girl, our $10,000 scam artist, joins the autism forum because they were, <laughs> their friend made fun of them so much. Their friends told him he was such a weird little shit that when they finally said, are you fucking autistic, David? He was like, you know what? Yeah, I am. I must be. I must be fucking autistic. And he just went with it. And he probably had arguments, you know, uh, based on what we're reading with his parents, where he tried to convince them that, hey, I'm not just an insufferable cunt. I'm autistic and you have to put up with it. And mommy, when I tinkle outside the toilet, you need to wipe it up. That's your job. Get down there, champ. Start scrubbing those floors. David tinkles all over the place. He can't help it. It's like a Tumblr blog. David Shitrat's life is a Tumblr blog. He diagnosed himself with his own condition. He pees on the floor so his mother has to wipe it up. He, <laughs> he gets scammed or is a scam artist. He tries to date lesbians because he's too fucking retarded to realize lesbians don't want to suck dick. He, he got so mad at the fact conservative girls wouldn't fuck him, he started an internet war. And according to the words that uh, Nick and uh, himself used, allowed an imbecile to fight the war for them. They're referring to Kraut. Brilliant. Oh, I can see why you're so smirt, David. Such a smirt boy. Let's uh, let's delve deeper, chat. There's so many posts to go through. Oh, 
that one's not loading. Try another one here. Okay, what have we got? Oh, no, that was the Life Cycles one. All right. Do you apologize for no good reason? <laughs> Let's see what this no good reason was. All the time. On Monday, I'll be apologizing more than I ever have uh, before. I mean, the fact that I've destroyed a several-year friendship by telling a lesbian that I love her is going to need some serious apologies. And the fact that I'm unlikely to see her again is another apology. And anything else I can think of on the fly. Oh, it wasn't a stranger. He knew the lesbian. He knew the lesbian was a lesbian. And he still tried to fuck her. And he ruined the relationship. Oh, you're dumb. David, you were so fucking stupid. What are you doing? I thought you were smart. You told us how smart you were, David. Remember, you told us everybody around you is an idiot. And you tried to fuck a lesbian. <laughs> You're so fucking dumb. <laughs> what an idiot. Oh, sorry. Oh, God. Good morning, Lauren. I've just raped you. Yes! <laughs> oh, just the master of pickups. Oh, David. What the fuck are you doing? Oh, sorry. What a dumb fucker he is. What a dumb dumb. David, what a dumb dumb you are. If the girl's a lesbian, she doesn't want to date you. That's not even an autism thing. That's just a common sense thing, you stupid fuck. Even, even an autist would know that. <laughs> Faking autism is an excuse for making yourself look like an asshole at high school. They have a fucking thing about how to kill. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, David. This is about. This is a thread said uh, that's titled "How do How do I keep eye contact with people?" And somebody said, "Focus on the eyeball." And then he said, "Which eye? People have two of them." Oh, I thought. Oh, you're so dumb. This is an autism. It's stupidity. You're a fucking idiot, David. <laughs> Which one? Pick one. It's in the middle of their fucking face. They're not gonna. They're not gonna like specifically know which fucking eye you're looking at. Oh, you're stupid. God, what an idiot! No wonder this crowd shit didn't work. No wonder. No wonder the 24-hour Discord ops failed. David's a fucking moron. A dirty, dumb fucking moron. No wonder it all blew up in his stupid fucking face. Crowd, holy shit. This guy's dragging you down. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Kraut, David is fucking over your Discord ops. He's the he's the fucking moron that's screwing you over. Oh. Let's go into the obsession and interest section. See if we can find some more. Oh, well, they've got two eyes. I don't know what to do. I'm so fucking confused. Tries to date a lesbian. What a fucking idiot. Oh, we might be... Uh, uh, maybe the love and the self-diagnosis and the hitting up lesbians thing, that might... <laughs> we might have crested the mountain on those. Oh, yeah, it's just... Uh, a lot of the other ones are him going into technical talk. Let's see if we go... We'll check out Off Topic. Maybe there's some good gems in there. What is this thread? Who else loves to sleep? Oh, there we go. I sleep as a drug, chasing the purple dragon of not being tired. Ah, Andy, he beat you to it. You thought you were so original with purple dragon. Who knew autistic, lesbian hitting <laughs> David Shitrat beat you to it years ago? You're gonna need a new, you're gonna need a new name. Okay, I, I think we, yeah, we might have crested the mountain. I, I think we've gotten the basic gist of David Shitrat. I don't know. I'll check out general chat and see what they think. Oh, my God. What a fucking idiot this guy is.
Uh, so let's see. What, what do we have? What do we have when it comes to David Shitrat? We've got a self-diagnosed autist whose friends made fun of him so much he convinced himself that he is actually autistic. He then went on to ruin a relationship with somebody he knew was a lesbian, for years knew was a lesbian, and still tried to hit on them. When the lesbian probably told him, you don't have a vagina, David, I'm not interested, he decided to become a MGTOW. Remember, he wrote that post in 2014. By 2015, he's in newspapers or news articles talking about men going their own way. So David made such an asshole of himself hitting on a lesbian in high school that the only way he could save himself from embarrassment was by becoming a MGTOW and saying that he hated women and he didn't want to be accused of rape and that he wasn't interested in vaginas. But he still couldn't shake that urge to try to bang chicks outside of his ability or league. So he go, he hones in on Lauren Southern and other alt-right chicks. And like the lesbian, they're not interested. Except in this case where the lesbian wanted somebody with a vagina, these two you know conservative chicks wanted somebody with a dick. And because dickless David doesn't know what the fuck he's doing because he doesn't know what eye to contact... Oh, what am I staring at? They've got two eyes. I'm so fucking confused. They rejected him. And he got so fucking mad about that that, again, the only way to save himself from embarrassment, just like what happened in high school, was he started an internet war on a Discord. And he brought in fucking Kraut to do his dirty work. Just because chicks won't fuck him. David is like a... He's a chameleon. You know, lesbian girl won't hit on me, I'm a MGTOW now. Lauren Southern won't fuck me, I'm an SJW now. What's going to happen when David tries to fuck Drelasta? What, what are you going to become now, Davina? Like, you're running out of skins to wear. There's no more camouflage to cover yourself in. You've, you've hit the end of the road, Davina. There's nowhere else to go. Oh. oh there is. I guess there is one final place that Davina can go. There's one final, there's one final act, and we all know what it is. He has no more, no more sanctuaries to hide from his embarrassment. Fake doxing himself, becoming a MGTOW, starting an internet war. There's only one other card that he can possibly play. Davina has to become a girl. It's the only way they can avoid being made fun of. It is a tale as old as time. You know, in the trans community, there's a term called trans trender which I think refers to people that are just being transsexual to be trendy, hence the name transgender. That's not what David's doing, but there needs to be a term that applies to what David's doing because it's somewhat similar. David's going to become transsexual. He's going to become a tranny to avoid being made fun of by, by probably hiding behind uh, that label. And I don't know what that term is, but that's what it should be. It should apply to him. Give it a year. And this dude is going to be wearing a dress and taking hormones and talking about the real him. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. David will become Davina within the next 12 months. He has nowhere else to go. With your self-diagnosed autism hitting on lesbians. Oh, what a retard you are, David. Telling everybody how smirt you are. You're the opposite of smirt. I see Chad is trying to come up with the appropriate <laughs> trans shielding. I don't know if that works, but maybe. There's the, come on. There's got to be some transsexuals in the audience. There has to be a term for this. You must know what I'm talking about. <laughs> trans celibate? Trans cel? <laughs> maybe. I actually like trans cel. That, that uh, uh, transsexually celibate. David is so upset he can't get a girlfriend, he has decided to become a girl and become and, and use that as the excuse for why he can't date women. He is trans celibate. He's a transcel. Oh David. Well, I, I hope you've enjoyed. I, we've gone two hours now on David. 
And and there was I really wish I could have found the fucking clip of him tinkling, or his mother arguing with him about him peeing on the potty, because that was funny as shit. It is if you look on YouTube, it's David Chirat, Lauren Southern, 2015, and somewhere in that hour and a half, you will hear her in the background, like open the door and yell at him, and then he disappears for like a minute and comes back and he's once again awkward with Lauren. Like, he couldn't be more awkward with the weird shit he fucking continually says to her. Good morning, Lauren. I've just raped you. Yes! <laughs> but that's a life of Davina. I wanted to, to cover it as best I could. We went over the autism forum post. We talked about uh, his past shenanigans and his embarrassments. And really, I mean, we're left with one question as we wait for him to fully transition to protect himself from being made fun of. Where is that fucking money, Davina? Show me the money! Where's the money, Lebowski? Where's the money, Lebowski? Where's the money? Where's the fucking money, shithead? Show me the money! Well, it took a while. A transfuge, that's a good one. <laughs> Trans going their own way, that's a good one too. Lots of good terms. Maybe we'll do a poll for it next week and see if we can come up with a good one. Trans going their own way, trans cell. Yeah, these, these, these are all good. But we covered David, finally. After three weeks of it continually being stalled, we're finally, finally at the point where we've covered Davina. And should more Davina shenanigans come to the surface, I will most definitely cover them going forward. And Fine. For someone who speaks on gender issues, like, oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, it's triggering that she's being, uh, yeah. what's the word? Able, uh, what is, what's the word when you're offensive to disabled people? Ableist. Yeah, she's being very ableist right now. But she can pronounce these words and I can't. Um, I've got to go for a, just a quick second. I'll be back in a sec. Okay. Well, good weekend chat. Guess what? I've got some fantastic news for us all. I think it's something we can all be super fucking excited for. Guess who's back? David's back. Oh, Davina, I've missed you so much. You disappeared on us. I didn't know where you went, baby, but now you're back. You're back to stay. We've, we've got a, a little show programmed around. David needs our help. He needs our help. We've got we've to gotta do something. We need to step forward to, to help him snag some pussy. Because David's in a tough spot right now. But because our boy is back, you know what that means. Can, it can only mean one thing. We have A-U-T, I-S-M. I have A-U-T, I-S-M, autism. Don't be scared of me. Don't be scared of me. Because we're the same. You and me. I have A-U-T. It's a special time in a special boy's life. Oh, David. I don't know. He just disappeared for a while. I think Mommy might have thrown him out of the house. There was a threat. If he didn't keep his room clean, he was going to have to go. And I think he did go because he went backpacking across the world. He pulled a Tilly Law, decided to hit the road and explore. See what's out there. See what kind of ladies he can lure in. <laughs> and you know the person to best give advice on how to snag some hot bitches. Monday, Matt. It was fun hanging out and exploring. We gotta do it again before you leave. That leaves it a little bit open and vague. Uh, you could interpret that a few ways. I mean, what does he mean by hanging out and exploring? Exploring what? What sort of things were Matt and uh, Davina exploring together? I, I have my speculation. Now, I'm not saying that a post-op Davina visited Monday Matt at the quarry and they smashed some boulders together and got hot and sweaty. Dirty, dirty boulder smashing taking place at the quarry. I'm not saying that's what happened, but when I hear, I loved exploring with you, that's, uh, you know, that's maybe the first thing that pops into my mind. I mean, they are a cute couple, don't get me wrong. I could see these two together for, for a long, long time. 
I see people in chat saying they like that intro. You can thank Odeker for it. He super chatted me last time and finally got around to watching it, and it was pretty great. I can't audio edit like that. I don't have that skill and ability, so I let him do it. Oh, do we have a Minecraft donation? What is this? From Cody Rush. So, Jim, I found out It's a Gundam is a fan of yours. Also, it was because he made a video shit-talking Monday, Matt, that I looked into TRR and found you. You're the best man. Keep it up. Be sure to check out my Minecraft LPs on my YouTube channel. Mr. Minecraft. That's where I take the biggest donations. That's where, that's where we go to do it. So little Davina came back. And uh, he blessed us with his presence. Now, he's a ladies' man. I don't know about you, but those MGTOW boys, those incels, they know how to woo a lady. And David wasted no time. Wasted no time coming back and, you know, I guess his experience with Matt maybe confirmed to him that he really did like the ladies, and so that lifestyle was set aside. And he decided to explore explore a future relationship with somebody else, but things didn't turn out so well. Oh, Davina. That's so tragic and sad. Now, what do, what do you wager, little David here? What do you wager our little David did? The moment that he met a girl that could tolerate talking to him. I don't know if you're f familiar with the shit rat cycle. Meet a girl, freak the girl out, make sure the girl never talks to you again. It doesn't really matter politics or ethnicity. None of that really matters. It's pretty much an all-female thing. But poor little David. Well, he ran into some problems. And, you know, I'm here to help. I think Chad is here to help. We all want to help David score some putang, right? I mean, our boy is desperate for it. So you can imagine my shock when, when out of the blue this popped up on Twitter. I'm posting this statement about David Shuret on behalf of B Beer Reincarnate. Uh-oh. Why would somebody need to have a message posted for them? What could that possibly mean? Well, we're going to have to take a look. We're going to have to read and find out. Let me just pull this statement up in full, and we can find out what happened with David's love quest. Surely she must have been wooed. They're probably getting married. That would be my guess. I'm having someone else post my statement, because I really don't need a bunch of people spamming my mentions. I'm already pissed and hurt, but I feel the need to say something. A while back, David was planning on coming to America and stopping by to visit. Great. Totally cool with that. We've been friends, and it's good to hear he's traveling. Later on, a few friends of his told me rather aggressively that he had feelings for me. I like the emphasis on aggressive. How do you aggressively tell somebody something? He's going to fuck you and you're going to like it. <laughs> something he didn't reveal. I ended up talking it out with David. It turned out he was pretty much coming to the States to woo me. I told him the distance factor would make dating impossible as gently as possible. And he was cool with it saying he would also go to other parts of America he wanted to visit. I also told him I would be very busy that week with helping out various family members during a time of distress, <laughs> something that abruptly came up. One of my family members ended up getting sick the day after I met David, and I told him I'd be unable to meet him because of it. The nice guy mask came off to reveal entitlement, claiming I was lying, making excuses, not putting in any effort for him. I have a sick, disabled, dying family member to tend to while I also have to work and do household chores and yard work for various family members. He backpedaled when I called him on it. He DM'd what essentially was a self-invitation to a family member's home. Strange for obvious reasons. He then went on to talk about how he intended to kiss me, despite me making it very clear that a relationship could not happen. Him feeling he was more entitled to my time than my dying great-grandma. The fact he had intentions in the past secret, and he intended to kiss me, despite telling me he was fine with just being friends, led me to believe that I could have ended up in a very uncomfortable situation. I have since blocked him, but I worry about how he might retaliate. He knows sensitive information about people I have feelings for, and have worked with on combating the alt-right. After two years of friendship, I expected better. I was played for a fool by a nice guy. I initially was going to keep this quiet, but after hearing that I'm not the only girl this has happened to, I feel the need to speak out. I initially had a great time with David when I met him, and I will not backtrack on that. But his true colors eventually shined through and left me pissed and brokenhearted over a lost friendship. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if you guys remember the last stream we did. 
with David and how he might be a little aggressive. The whole story about the uh, high school friend that was a lesbian <laughs> that he knew for like a decade. He knew a gay girl. He knew a lesbian. And he tried to, he basically tried the same thing on her. Secretly had feelings for her and just waiting for that opportunity. He was gonna, he was gonna make the gay go away using his cock. Of course, the lesbian friend told him, hey, idiot, I, I like girls, what are you doing? And David was just, he was shitter shattered after that heartbreaking moment. And once again, here we go, plans a trip to America, all under the deception that he was coming here to just travel when he really wanted to woo a girl who's taking care of dying family members. Oh. Well, it would be unfair of me, I think. If I didn't let David respond, I mean, clearly he can clear this all up for us, can he? Posted on behalf of Discord Spies, that's David, by the way. Not taking sides, just passing on the message. Well, let's see what, uh, <laughs> let's see what his message is. Let's, uh, let's hear his side of the story. Oh, 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 where, where are we? Where are we here? Oh, we should be in here somewhere. Uh-oh. Oh, there we are. Hey, it's David here. I didn't want to start shit with karma, so I'll keep this brief. My account got locked, so a friend is posting this. Karma and I had a great time. She told me she wanted to meet me the next night and even tweeted she'd date me if I lived here. Next morning, she told me to delete our selfie, and we couldn't meet for the rest of the entire week. I said it sounded like she was avoiding me, because we had a better time than expected. And maybe it freaked her out. That is some smooth, or that, that's some high-level thinking right there. That's uh, Chad logic. Wow, this girl that I met is uh, trying to avoid me, doesn't want any contact, told me to delete pictures of us together, and then has been ignoring me. Clearly, she wants my dick badly. The only reason that she's, <laughs> the only reason she's blocking me and requesting I never contact her again is because she's afraid of how much she loves me. That's some great detective work there, Davina. She got mad, told me I wasn't entitled to her time, and she had good reasons. I apologized and didn't want to make her feel guilty. So plan B. Went and found something else to do. Had a great time with Jeff and Mems. Still a little drunk. I don't know why she's putting this on the internet. I don't want to hurt her. Everyone just leave her alone. Going back to my hotel tonight and then I'll be flying home. I enjoyed the rest of my holiday with the holidays. They're great people, so in a way, it worked out better. Had fun in America. I'll definitely come here again. Yes, I have a plan. I have a feeling he's planning on coming back once that restraining order falls out of effect. <laughs> when she forgets to update it, he's coming on back over. It's a woo her too, electric boogaloo. David's coming for a date. Oh, but that's you know it doesn't even end there. I mean, she decided to release. This is amazing. She decided to release some DMs just to kind of show what the conversation was like between her and uh, between her and David. <laughs> just so people understood what was going on. I'll just read you some from left to right here if you're following along. Uh, no, I'm glad to have met you. Things on my end just got a hectic. And you're not going to even leave the house for the rest of the week? My mom's sick. My great-grandmother is dying. Needs help with cleaning and yard work. So we're already going to end up behind. I have to work. I need to watch my brother when my, uh, he gets home. I tried telling you. I was going to be insanely busy this week on Discord. We had to cancel the carpet change a while back because we had too much yard work, and we were too far behind. Do I need to prove to you that my mom is sick or something? No. I just thought you might make a little more effort. <laughs> oh, this guy is amazing. Hey, bitch. Listen here, slut. Okay, I don't care if grandma's dying and your mom is sick. You need to put in some fucking work in this relationship. <laughs> I thought you would put in more effort. Wow, he's smooth. Fucking regular Casanova over here. I was able to make time Monday night after basically insisting on it. I warned you about how busy I'd be a couple of weeks ago. You told me you'd do other things in America, so I wasn't expecting you to stick around the PNW the entire time. I had a good time, really. But if you're still trying to pursue me, it was never going to work. The distance is too great. I kind of just wanted to kiss you. Just once. <laughs> David, what are you doing? 
apparently being told this can never happen over and over doesn't register in your brain. <laughs> you need to put in more effort, you fucking whore. <laughs> David, why? Why would you... Oh, oh, listen. Listen here, lady. All right, you don't know who you're fucking with. I just wanted a kiss. All right, so I'm going to go dig a grave for your great-grandma. <laughs> I'm going to dig one next to it for your sick mother. Then we're going on a date. You listen here, sweetheart. David wants some pussy. David's going to get what David wants. I came to this fucking country from across the ocean. You're going to tell me no? I just want a smooch. Just a kiss a -roo. Just one peck on the cheek. How many people are going to have to die for that to happen, honey? It's a question you're going to need to ask yourself. Just, just one kiss, baby. Just one kiss. Come on. Don't be like that. We can make it work. Once your family's dead, we'll have all the time in the world. I can make that happen. Have my friends not told you aggressively enough that I want to fuck you? <laughs> it's a repeat of the lesbian story. It's the exact same thing. David, David finds a woman that has no interest in him. <laughs> like, I just, I, his pickup game's amazing. Hey, fuck your dying family members. My dick needs to get wet. It's, uh, it's right up there with a the Lauren Southern wooing attempt. Good morning, Lauren. I've just raped you. Yeah! I can David. <laughs> what are you doing? It, I swear to God, this reminds me of something that's up on, uh, that's up on Our Nice Guys. Just, just compare and contrast David's reaction to her talking about a dying family member to this and see if there are any similarities that fucking strike you. Hey, call me if you need anything. Please, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Anything at all, even if you just want to talk to. Please, just know that all the BS that we've been through, I will never love the way I loved you. Really not in the mood for this. Okay, sorry for being in love with you. Glad you look at me as such a piece of shit when you were in my life. Don't worry, we'll never be, I'll never text you again. Fucking stop or I'm blocking you. My boyfriend just died, don't you get that? Bye. Maybe if I was fucking dead, maybe you would care. Driving home, hope I die you miss me as much. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> David's picking up some uh, some game tips from the nice guys. I love it. I just I just want one kiss, just one smooch, bitch, just one one kiss a roo. What are you doing? <laughs> what a fucking spaz! Oh, this guy, this guy is amazing. Okay, David. <laughs> oh, David, David, David. You know, I feel bad for him. Listen, our boy needs some he needs some advice. He needs some pointers on how to get some some ladies, you know? How to woo the women. I don't think it's working out, you know, threats of aggression and telling him to put in more work when people are dying just isn't just isn't winning them over like it used to. You know, back in the, the Halcyon days of high school. <laughs> David needs to up his game. Luckily, luckily for us, somebody made a documentary just for him. It's a, it's an exceptional piece of art I think is gonna help him. Uh, help him really, really secure that pussy, if you know what I mean. Now, I think you're going to like the name of it. It, it kind of gives away a little bit. Uh, but I thought we could watch it and then compile a list of tips that are going to help David score some uh, some nice ladies. <laughs> uh, the documentary's name is Shy Boys. Amazing, isn't it? And, uh, I, you know, we're going to we're going to take a look. I need we need to understand. Right. We need to we need to be serious. Take a close look at what it's like to be Davina. So we can help him kind of puzzle out where the problem is. What's what's not working for him at the moment. And I think I think watching this documentary is going to help us do that. <laughs> so that's my plan. Oh, God. This guy is just amazing. How do you do it, David? How do you repeatedly do the same fucking mistake over and over again? It's like he never learns. Did you not did you not ever play Far Cry? What is it for? <laughs> the definition of insanity bit? He's just doing it over and over again. Maybe maybe take some time, be a little introspective. Figure out that uh, maybe your game is shit, bro, and it's not working out for you so well. <laughs> she <laughs> fucking family's dying and you're chastising her. Come on, bitch. <laughs> you know you want it. What the fuck's your problem, lady? 
David. Oh, you're dumb. <laughs>